Welcome to County Stadium uh, in Milwaukee. Uh, tonight we have the inside pitch matchup between the 1982 Brewers hosting the, 2000, uh, the 2016 Chicago Cubs. Um, making this video sort of as a instructional or tutorial how to play. Give uh, new players a chance to see how the game works and People who are looking to uh, maybe get in, in, into inside pitch to um, compare it to other games they might be used to. Um, obviously, I'm not the designer, but I've been playing for a number of years. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to uh, give you guys some uh, good insight into um, the way the system works and uh, the rules. Um, so the game itself, uh, when you order, you can go to the website insidepitch.com and it's nice you can order the um, PDF version of the game, which is what I've done. I have five or six seasons um, where you order the PDF version and I just print it out and cut out the cards myself. Um, you can order the black and white version or the color version. I get the color and then I just um, print it out on the home printer and cut it. I use 110 pound card stock, it works pretty well. Um, you can also order uh, the black and white version. Well, the, the PDF comes, that's really nice, the PDF version come with either the black and white or the colors, you can have either one. And of course you can order the printed cards. Uh, and I mean, as you can tell, the, the cards look really nice uh, just from the home printing and I'm sure the um, professionally printed ones uh, look a lot better. And of course, they're gonna last a lot longer. Um, some of these teams have actually printed and cut a couple times uh, over the years. But um, anyway, that being said, um, it's easy to get into the game. It's almost no risk because uh, Chris um, Schleben, the designer, uh, he offers a um, kind of an introductory game that comes with all the rules, the charts, and two teams, the 2008 Rays, the 2008 Phillies. Um, so you can kind of get your feet wet and see if you like it. And I think it's like seven fifty or eight dollars for the PDF and fifteen dollars, something like that, for the printed uh, version. Um, there's also lots of support for the game on the Delphi forums. Uh, Chris is very active, so he's there to answer questions and you know a lot of experienced players as well to help you out. Um, so for the most part, I'm going to try to go over as much as I can, you know, just play the game and go through it um, kind of step by step. You know, at first I'll show you all the, the finer points and kind of highlight the different roles and what's going on on the cards and the charts. And then after a while, um, once we get into it, I'll probably just um, roll the dice and read out the results and get in the flow to kind of speed it up a little bit. Um, I'd say in an average game, I can get in between 35 and 45 minutes. And I think that's kind of standard for most tabletop baseball games. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get started. A little bit about the uh, charts first. Um, the game has, well, it comes with, um, it comes with a printed playing field that has the base runner advancement. Um, charts on it as well, but I don't use that because I just do the base runner advancement and keep track of the base runners uh, just on the well, when I'm keeping score. But you know, it's got the little field so you can uh, put markers or tokens out there and um, for the runners. Also comes with two d6 uh, or di two six sided die referred to as d6, and then a, a twenty sided die or the d20. Um, however. What I do when I played, I have two sets of dice. I have um, the pitcher's dice, which I roll and read. And you always read the, the individual six-siders. Um, and I do it black and white. So they correspond to the columns on the player cards. So for example, if you're rolling like here, we got a one and a five, you would look, you can do it either way you want. You know, uh, you can go across the top first and then read the side or side first and read the top, whatever you want to do. But I always read it black and white top first and then the side second. So in this case, a 1-5 would be a 1 and a 5. And then it corresponds to what um, the result in that box. And we'll get into all that. Um, 
soon enough. And then I have the 20 sider. I roll that at the same time for any of the 20 sided checks that come out for strikeout ratings, walk ratings, home run ratings, that sort of thing. <clears throat> And the way the game uh, basically works is what you do is you roll on the pitcher's card. Um, and Chris designed the game around what he calls the three uh, true outcomes um, philosophy, where the pitcher is, is, is responsible for strikeouts, home runs, or walks. And then if he doesn't generate a strikeout, a home run, or, or walk result, then the uh, batter is responsible and the fielders come into play. So... You roll on the pitcher's card, check the result, and that's going to get either a strikeout, home run, or walk check, or a different result, or a blank. When you get a blank, you go to the batter's card, you roll on the batter's card for the result. And then there's other combinations uh, <clears throat> excuse me, of, of, of uh, results uh, that integrate the defenders, uh, such as error checks, range checks, that sort of thing. Uh, each team also comes with a ballpark card. Uh, for that particular season that reflects different tendencies um, that occurred that year. So we, we're at, it's a 1982 Brewers. So we see County Stadium uh, has, the, has the playing grid, which is uh, just like the one on the pitcher card and the batter card. Um, but it has modifiers um, to the batter strikeout ratings, the walk ratings, and some, um, not many, but some, some also have a modifier to the home run ratings. Um, because the home run ratings are actually built into the ballpark card there. Um, so a lot of times there's not going to be an adjustment. <clears throat> okay. Uh, pardon me. I'm just going to grab a little iced tea here. All right. <clears throat> there we go. So the... Um, like I said, the way it works is you roll for the pitch. Uh, you roll on the pitcher's card, uh, and then uh, you'll you'll check, and then maybe you'll roll on the batter's card, and then integrate it. And it's pretty simple. Nice thing about it is the game does not require a lot of chart lookups uh, for every play. I mean, there's a few, uh, but after you play, uh, you know, a few games, you start to get used to the charts, and a lot of things. Um, are easy to memorize, become second nature. But I'll just kind of go over the charts real quick. As I said, the game comes comes with the the ball field. Um, it also has the um, strategy chart here that has strategy roles, uh, which you can uh, use it to basically automate the game. So it'll make the decisions for you as the coach or manager. Um, you roll a 20 sider against the ratings to see if there was a stolen base attempt, a hit and run attempt, a bunt, uh, or pick off attempt when there's guys on bases. It also has the um, runner advancement chart for base running. And then the throwing charts for when you're throwing guys out, uh, that's here. Um, stealing results, hit and run, bunting possibilities. Down here is the bunting chart. Um, then it has the uh, what to do when you have runners on bases for ground outs, fly outs. It's got the double play pivot table, um, which after a few games you'll memorize. It's, it's, it's pretty logical if you know baseball at all um, or familiar with uh, um, you know, baseball, you'll, you'll understand that uh, certain situations or the pivot man is, is going to be automatic. Um, there's a line drive chart. So if there's a line drive, you have possibility for double plays. Uh, and you've got your fly outs. Uh, what to do with there's a fly out situation for our sacrifices, that kind of thing. On the other side is the range and error chart. Um, and it's, it's uh, basically you're going to be checking um, against the uh, fielders. If you're checking against the fielder's range, you'll be rolling a six-sider. If it's less than or equal to the fielder's range, then he gets to the ball. If it's greater than that, then he doesn't get to it and it's a hit. And the error uh, chart, um, when you're checking for errors, it's on the 20-sider um, against the player's error rating. If it's less than the error rating, then he commits an error. If it's greater than the error rating, then he uh, makes the play. Um, and this just kind of details what happens if an error uh, is made or if a range check is failed or passed. Um, there is a rare play chart. has the bases empty on one side, the men on base on the other side. And you get to the rare play chart uh, from the ballpark card. So if you get, if you're rolling on the ballpark card and you blank comes up, then you go to the error chart. Um, Talk about the player cards real quick. Uh, here's uh, Mike Caldwell starting for the Brewers. 
These are his ratings. So he's a pitcher. Four is his defense range on a one through uh, one through five. Uh, best is five. Um, three is his error rating on one through twenty. So that's really good. Um, these are he's left-handed. His injury rating is zero, which pretty much means he's not going to get hurt. Um, and you can see that he pitched 258 innings that year. Now 31, that's his endurance rating. That's the number of batters he can face in a game before facing tired um, pitcher penalties uh, or effects. Uh, 14 is an optional rule. Uh, it's a it's a pull rule or what I call a hook rule. If a pitcher gives up that many runs hits and walks total in a game, then you're supposed to pull him right away. Just, you know, obviously in case he doesn't have any stuff or he's just getting hammered and you want to get him out of there. Here's his relief ratings. Uh, one, he had one relief appearance. Um, I don't know if I said it, but 34, that's the actual number of starts he had that year. Uh, so he had one relief appearance and this would be, he could face one batter as a reliever and zero would be his pull rating. So, uh, Caldwell wasn't used as a reliever. Um, let's see. So the double star line is important. It shows a pitcher's tendencies. Um, so you'll see Caldwell's got three G's on these results and three F's. So three ground balls, three fly balls. So he's kind of a 50-50 pitcher. Some guys will have all G's and some guys will have all F's, whatever. Um, but that is, uh, you know, just to show that the type of tendency that uh, or uh, uh, type of pitcher he is. Then you look at the, this is the uh, play matrix that uh, starts generating the results. And, you know, once we get into that, uh, we'll see how that all works. But then over here, you've got a home run rating. Uh, and this is all on a 20 sider. So against a left-handed batter, if a home run check comes up, you would roll the tw check the 20 sider. If it's one through 19, um, then you would go to the batter's card, roll a 20 sider against his home run rating. And then to see if it's a home run. So right away you can see how the pitcher and the batter combined uh, will develop a home run. Same thing for strikeouts and walks. Uh, so they're 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 dependent on one another uh, for the most part. And you see here in the brackets the or in the parentheses the thirty. That's how many long balls he gave up that year. So against a left-handed batter, he'd be one through nineteen. Uh, you'd check on the batter. Right-handed batter would be one through eighteen. So he has a tendency to give up some uh, deep balls. Uh, the question marks here refer to if you get a question mark result, you go here. Once again, check the batter. In this case, on a one or a two, you go up here to the star line, the double star. I, I just call it the star line uh, up here. Um, and a right-handed batter, it'd be a one through three. You go to the star line and check out, check that result. Uh, and if you don't get in that range, then you go to the batter card. So that's pretty much how it works. If you don't get a result off the pitcher card or you get a blank um or if there, uh, uh, a rating check isn't passed, then he would go to the batter's card and roll uh, the results on his card. His wild pitch rating is one through fifteen, so uh, then that's a twenty on a twenty sider. So he has a tendency to uh, get a little wild. He's got a pass ball rating sixteen and nineteen. He's really good at limiting the running game, though. The first number minus two. That's the number you subtract from a runner's hold or from a runner's stolen base attempt. Uh, or his, his jump, basically his jump attempt, you know, to get a good jump, good lead. Um, so Caldwell has a minus two. Um, and, for example, if Jason Hayward was looking to steal, Jason Hayward has an attempt rating of two. You subtract Caldwell's minus two and brings, brings it to zero. So Hayward's not going to be getting a good lead, uh, not going to be running much. Um, and also he has a minus one to the stolen base success chance. So... If a, if, uh, if a stole, uh, runner does attempt to steal, uh, you would subtract the, um, the minus one from his uh, success rate. You also throw in the catcher's arm, and that gives you a final number. You roll a 20-sider and gives you the result. Caldwell is also good at inducing double plays. Um, double plays are rolled against a six-sider, combining the batter's double play rating. In this case, here would be a one. Plus Caldwell uh, would be a two, and then... It, the pivot man's rating so some of the pivot men have pluses or minus so that could affect that will affect it um but you want to as a pitcher you want to see the pluses there for the double play this is his block rating on a 20 sider is one his uh pickoff rating uh two or three and then pickoff error if that comes up then you would check against that all right here's his season stats 17 and 13 wins and losses no saves era and expitch hits 
uh, strikeouts and walks. Um, so Caldwell is definitely a pitch to contact kind of guy. Uh, a lot of inks pitch, a lot of hits. Strikeout and walk ratio are roughly even. So uh, well, you're going to get a lot of balls in play uh, when Caldwell is pitching. Batters. Uh, so we look at Jason Hayward. Uh, Hayward, um, right fielder, five is his defensive range, which is the best there is. Um, and we'll, we'll, like uh, once again, you're, right, you're rolling a six sider against that range, and if it's less than or equal to, then he makes the play. So uh, five is the best. Uh, two is the defensive rating, uh, or the I'm sorry, the error rating. So that's on a twenty sider. So Hayward's an excellent defender, but we all know that, and he's got a minus two arm. So this is you know one of the one of the best defend, uh, defending defensive outfielders um, you're gonna find. The uh, let's see. So this is his uh, he's left-handed batter. His injury rating here. The injuries come up on the rare play chart, uh, and you'll check against your injury rating. Uh, this we'll ignore for now, but that's just a randomizer. If the ball is hit the left or right, you can uh, generate some extra base hits there off of the uh, player matrix. The, uh, the um, these are his game ratings that, uh, so when the at-bats come, uh, when, the, when the pitches are made, you're beginning to check in against the batter strikeout rating, his walk rating, his home run rating, and that's right here. And you modify those with the ballpark rating. So throughout, so for tonight's game, everybody's strikeout rating is going to be down by three and their walk rating is going to be down by two. Okay, so Hayward's would be a five, a 13, and there's no adjustment to the home run and a six against Caldwell. Uh, here's his base runner range of three. Uh, that's on a one through uh, five. So he's about uh, he's in the middle there. His bunting rating is a one. Um, five is the best. Um, his his uh, stolen base attempt rating is a two. Now this is on a twenty sider, uh, so that's pretty low. Uh, but he's got a decent success rate of, of fifteen uh, if he does get a jump and goes. Uh, here's his double play rating. Uh, most are like uh, ones or twos. Um, some are threes. I've seen a four here and there. Um, but uh, but that, as I said before, is, is how you generate the double play uh, rating um, that combined with the pitcher's rating and the, and the uh, pivot man. Sacrifice fly rating. Uh, that's against a six-sider. Um, so he's not going to hit a whole lot of uh, deep balls uh, for sacrifice flies. His hit by pitch rating. I think I actually skipped Caldwell, but uh, Caldwell's got a hit by pitch rating of minus 10. Hayward's got a hit by pitch rating of 6. You put the two together, you get a negative number. You can't roll a negative number. Uh, so there is no uh, hit chance to actually uh, hit uh, Hayward here. Um, that's his season stats. 142 games, uh, 530 at-bats, 61 runs, you know, RBIs, home runs, stolen base, etc. Okay, so anyway, so... Uh, Hayward's actually not leading off. He's betting ninth. Um, so that's the player cards. The um, we've seen this the uh, the ballpark card. Uh, so why don't we just kind of get started here and uh, go through it? And like I said, I'll kind of go step by step and uh, try to cover as much as possible as efficiently as possible. Uh, I might have mentioned I'm no expert. Um, and there, you know, there's a, a few things that I might overlook or miss. You know, as I'm, I'm trying to explain things and. Uh, play the game at the same time so you know bear with me here um but i made this a video just because i didn't haven't found a whole lot of uh the card and dice version of the game like demos on youtube or any other videos i mean there's a the the, the pc game is really good uh, um you can i think you can try out the pc game for i think two days for free um uh, from the website so that's no risk as well uh, i've done that uh it's a it's very well done, but I just prefer the card and dice. I, you know, I like to roll the dice and have everything out here in front of me. But the PC game works really well as well. And there's plenty of videos um, that can show you how that works. And I may have mentioned um, if you have issues with how to play the game or questions, whatever. Chris is really active on the Delphi forums, and there's plenty of experienced guys out there to help you out. And there's also a lot of uh, good, lively uh, discussion about different rule points and what some people, you know, think they want to see in the game and changes. And Chris is very open to making adjustments or tweaks here and there. In fact, in the rules on the last page of the rules, it says if you come up with an issue or something in the game that's not resolved in the rules, 
you know, feel free to use logic and, and baseball sense and, you know, convert it into a six-sided die roll, uh, which is cool. And I've done that myself. Uh, I've tweaked the game uh, uh, in different areas, just, you know, for minor things, for a little more drama. Um, if those come up, I might mention it here, but uh, in, for the purposes of just demonstrating the gameplay, I will just stick to um, hopefully as much as the, the rules as uh, is published um, so that uh, new players are just playing by what is um, printed and then they can adjust it as they get more comfortable, more experienced. Okay, so why don't we go and uh, we get started here. Uh, first, uh, however, we have to have the obligatory playing of the national anthem or singing and uh, I'll do that for you now uh, because that's just a tradition with me uh, but I do it briefly because I want to get into game so and the home of the brave play ball and that's all you really need all right so here we go all right so um, Caldwell is going to pitch to Dexter Fowler you know oh, we got a little shadow here maybe I'll adjust that here so we can see that Okay, and uh, do forgive me. I'm trying to do the, you know, uh, keep drag everything with the phone and the dice, and so I might, uh, you know, jiggle around it a little bit here, but I'll try to keep it manageable. All right, so Caldwell, um, I'll show you the dice uh, for maybe for the first inning, and then after that, I'll just kind of read them off, <coughs> excuse me, for the sake of, uh, you know, for expediency. So the way I do it, like I said, is I read the black and the white, and then the 20 the sider is um, for ratings checks. So it's a 5-5. Five, five. Caldwell leads off 5-5. Five, five. And we right off the bat, we have an EG, which means it's an error, it's a possible error on a ground ball. Um, so in that situation, we go directly to the batter's card and we roll on that to see if there is indeed a ground ball against which we'll check to see if there's an error. So uh, then I roll the other dice. Uh, you can't see that, but that's a, a 1-4. Uh, black and white. So I go to Fowler's card 1-4. That's a fly ball to 8. So it wasn't a ground ball. It was just a fly ball to center field for the first out. Okay. So then here's Zobrist. Now 35. Uh, let's see that. 3-5. And there's a 3. So 3-5. Okay. Uh, split card uh, or um, platoon advantage is a, is a uh, plays an important part in this game. So we see here a 3 and a 5 gives you a K slash home run. So the result to the left of the slash is what you read for a left-handed batter. The result to the right of the slash is what you read for the right-handed batter. In this case, Zobris is a switch hitter. He's been right-handed against the lefty Caldwell, which means it has a home run uh, check. Now there's two types of home run checks off the pitcher card. You've got the home run check with a question mark, um, and which is here in which case we would go here to check first the, the pitcher's tendency to give up the long ball there. Um, otherwise, you have the home run check without the question mark, which means you go directly to the hitter's card and you check his home run rating. So we already said County Stadium doesn't adjust the home run rating. So Zobrist, against a left-handed pitcher, he has a home run chance, of, a home run rating of seven. So on a one through seven, Zobrist is going to put, a, put it on the board. He's got an 18. Uh, no. So he did not get a hold of it, but we have to find out where that ball did end up. So 62, so I got a 62 over there. Uh, 62 tells us, well, it wasn't a home run, but he got, uh, he did get it in the gap. Um, and we got a D8, which is a double to center field. So right away, the Cubs are threatening. Now you notice I didn't have Bryant batting second. Uh, I had him, I had uh, Zobers bad second. Um, so, yeah, I'm not necessarily a strict traditionalist when it comes to recreating the games. I'll put in my own lineups or whatever I feel comfortable with, or, you know, sometimes I'll tweak them just for fun. And I know some guys like to play the game where they use the exact lineups, uh, you know, that the managers use or whatever. But, you know, it's your game. Do what you want. Have fun with it. All right, so Bryant has a runner on second. Now, we could... Uh, well, I won't show you how to do a stolen base attempt here because, uh, like I said, Caldwell has a minus two. That's his hold rating. Zobrist has a one. That's his attempt rating. So it's a negative chance to actually uh, steal a base. So there won't be a, any play at all here. He's not going to try to steal third. And why would you? That's not a good choice right now. So, um, and like I said, the, the, the chart 
or I may have mentioned that the chart allows you to basically automate the game if you would like uh, for strategy strategy decisions on the base pass, hit and run, slow and base, that's, that kind of thing. Uh, you don't have to necessarily do it that way. Uh, for the most part, I do, uh, but there are some game situations that it's kind of obvious that you know that a guy's not going to run or hit run or that sort of thing. Um, but if you want to if you want to do it, you can check for every batter or for every at bat to see if something is going on um, on the base pass. Like in this situation, um, you've got Zobrist on second, and Caldwell does have a pickoff rating of two or three. So you can roll, and you see on the chart it says uh, roll of 20 equals a pickoff 10. So you could roll um, each time, and Caldwell doesn't have a pickoff error rating. See that? There's no, there's no number there. Um, so it's pretty much uh, kind of a, a almost risk-free. Oh, there is a balk. He does have a balk rating of 1. So if you roll a... The 20 sider and a 20 comes up, you would check against that. So, oops, that's not the right. There we go. So, six comes up. So, yeah, nothing's going on in a second. But that's how you would do that if you want to uh, do the pickoff attempts. And, like I said, you could do that for every at bat if you want, or just do it when you feel like doing it. And I kind of do a hybrid. I mean, so, you know, I kind of uh, um, try to, try to um, you know, incorporate what I think would be realistically going on at that time. Um, okay, so Bryant is up with a runner at second. And one out. All right, we've got a 1-1 one, one and a 5. So 1-1 one, one tells us, oh, well, here we've got a possible error. The question mark. So we have to see where the ball is hit first. Off the better card. So it's a 1-3. One, 1-3 three. One, three off of Bryant. Here's a fly ball to... It's a question mark to seven. So it's a fly ball or a hit out to left, but we have to find out if it's actually going to drop in for a hit or if it's going to be caught. Oh, well, you look at <clears throat> Chris Bryant and his numbers. Uh, so it's going to be, it's definitely going to be something because on a one through six, it's going to be a single. On a seven through 14, it's a double. And a 15 through 20, it's a home run. So uh, there's uh, definitely uh, something's going on here. Um... Now, remember, the original die roll was the 1-1, one, one, which is an error check. So, depending on what happens here, we might have to check for an error. Uh, if you hit a home run, obviously, we won't have to check for that. So, I'm going to roll the 20 slider. And he got a 2. Okay. So, the 2 tells us, against the left-handed pitcher, it's a single. So, he's got himself a uh, base hit. Um, and it was a... Uh, Let's see. It was a single. That's right. It was a single to left. All right. So we're checking Ben Oglevy's error rating. So Ben Oglevy has an error rating of four. So it could be a single and an error or not. So we got a 15. So Oglevy handles it cleanly. All right. So on a single to left, now we have to find out what happens to the runner at second. So Zobrist, Zobrist has a base running rating of three. We come here to the runner advancement chart. We see on a single to left that a runner going from second to home, so we check here, has a plus one adjustment to his base running rating. So now Zobrist is a four. We subtract Ogilvy's arm, which is a minus two, which gives us a final adjusted base running rating of two. If there's two outs, you add one to that. But right now it's a two. So we roll a six-sider. Oops. Roll a six sider, and it's a four. So on a four, it just means that he doesn't advance. So he holds up at third. Had it been a one or a six, and we see this on the uh, base running throw chart, and the just the base runner, a one, it says no need for the throw as the runner stops with no advance. A six is an outfielder attempts no throw at the runner. Oh, this is the adjusted base running rating. Okay, if his rating is a six or greater, he automatically advances. If it's a one or less, he doesn't advance. However, if it's not one of those, which it wasn't, um, then you go to the throw chart and we see that we roll the four, which it's if the roll is less than or equal to the adjusted base running rating, and then the runner advances. Otherwise, they hold. So he holds. However, had it been a one, we'd have to roll again to see what happens. And if we roll a six, we'd have to roll again on this other chart to see what happens. So he holds at third. So we've got runners at first and third. 
with one out. Now, Bryant, we also look at his stolen base at 10th rating. It's a one, um, so he is not going to be stealing. And this is not a hit and run situation, obviously, with the uh, cleanup hitter Anthony Rizzo coming up. Or is it? Because Joe Madden is a mad genius. Anyway, so Caldwell is going to pitch, and we got a 41. 4 1 and a 14. So 4 1, we have an at symbol. Whenever you have an at symbol, you go to the ballpark chart to generate the result. So we go to the ballpark chart. And we roll it, and we got well, we got triple ones. We got 1 1. And a 1 1 on the ballpark is going to be a G6. Okay, so it's a ground ball shortstop. Uh, now, I didn't say this, um, but you can set the infielders, depending on the situation, to play in. Or back or halfway. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna just gonna assume that the Brewers were playing at double play depth to get out of the inning. Um, if you play in, it reduces your range, uh, so there is that penalty. And there's a chart for that, and it also tells you, um, uh, you know, how how the uh, base running situation right here um, is affected by the infield um, here, especially when they're on when the runner on third, this is what you'll be looking at. With the infield in, these are the adjustments. Infield halfway, that's the adjustment. Infield back. Okay. So the infield is at double play uh, depth, which, you know, halfway, which would reduce the range by one. Um, but there wasn't a range check. So anyway, so we had off of Rizzo's card, or I'm sorry, off the, off the ballpark card, Connie's saying we had ground ball the shortstop. So there's one also. We're going to show you how to, to uh, how a double play works. What you do is you check the double play rating of the batter, which is a two, Rizzo's two, Caldwell's a plus one, is a three, and the Brewers infield was outstanding. Yount has a plus one rating, and so does Ganner. So it doesn't matter who the pivot man is, you're gonna add one more to that double play rating. So on a one through four, we've generated a double play ground ball. So we see here that that the third die, that colored die, that's what that's what I use that for is for those random uh, to uh, generate things like the double plays and the sacrifice flies. So we see that's an ace. So automatically we've, we've got ourselves a six, four, three uh, double play. And it's that simple. All right. So Rizzo grounds out into the twin killing to end the threat for the Cubs here in the top of the first. So no runs on a couple hits. Okay. So now the Brewers are up. <clears throat> And we go to Jake Arietta to face Paul Molitor. Arietta's got a 2-1. 2 1 shows strikeout and walk W in parentheses. If he was tired, uh, if he had exceeded his endurance rating, which was 26, then we'd use that parentheses rating. So instead of a strikeout check, it'd be a walk check. But here's just a strikeout check. Uh, there's a 5 on the uh, 20 signer. We look at Molitor's strikeout rating. Against a righty is an 11, but it's minus 3 because for the counter statement adjustment. Um, but that brings us to a rating of 8. The 5 is less than 8, so Molitor strikes out. And so you, as you, so you can see, every strikeout and walk check is going to be an integration. Oh, and a home run check. It's going to be an integration of the pitcher, uh, pitcher's tendencies and the hitter's tendency, which is uh, something I really, really like. Um, I know there's the whole 50-50 game uh, versus uh, the integrated game, uh, you know, school of thought, but I don't have a problem with, I mean, I've been playing strat for a long time and um, and I really like strat, so I'm not one of these guys that, you know, I hate 50-50 games and whatever. Um, I, I, they're, they're just both different games and they both have a, a different, um, a, you know, just appeal to me in different ways. and. Um, and uh, you know so and and uh, yeah I'll just go off on a little a side here or a side anyway um, there's different games and there's there's plenty of uh, you know there's plenty of tabletop uh, baseball games out there um, and sometimes you just have to look around and play a whole bunch of them till you find one that you really like or that you're gonna play more often or or you just kind of rotate them through like me I play history maker baseball I play strat and I play the uh, inside uh, pitch. Um, and right now I'm just focusing on some pitch because I'm, I'm doing a uh, a series of uh, what if playoffs where I uh, sort of put all the 
uh, teams from the past into the present playoff system. So I'm doing a, 50, a 1956, a 1977 uh, playoff tournament uh, using the divisional format with wild cards, which is uh, kind of fun. So, you know, kind of a what if, uh, what if these other good teams had a chance to get to the playoffs? Um, so that, so I'm, I'm doing that right now. Uh, this, uh, this uh, demo here is not part of that. Uh, this is just kind of a friendly, just to show you how to how to play the game. All right, so back to uh, back to the game action. Uh, Robin Yount is up against Arietta, 22. We've got a range play at the ballpark. So when you have a RP, that means it's a range play, and then you have the at symbol, we go to the ballpark. And like I said, with the range play, you're just checking the six-sider against the um, fielder's range. So 24 on the ballpark is a star six. So with the star six, we go to the pitcher's star line. And we see that Arietta has a F9. It's a fly ball to right. So we're checking the uh, range of Jason Hayward. And we uh, know Hayward's a uh, five. We've got a four on the red die. So it's a fly ball to Hayward. So that's two outs. And here's Cooper. Cooper is a uh, lefty against area of the righty, so 4-4. Four, four. All right, so we've got the W plus. That's a walk plus check. Uh, you also see there's a K plus uh, result as well. Whenever you get a plus result, you just add 10 to the batter's rating uh, for that particular check. So here we would add 10 to Cooper's walk rating against a righty. He's a 4. Add 10 is a 14. But then you still have to throw in the county stadium modifier minus two. So his overall walk rating is a 12. We've got an 18 on the 20 sider. So he doesn't get walked, but let's see what he does do. We got 5-1. Five, 5-1. One. Five, one. This has a pop of the second. Okay, so that's the first inning. Um, no score. One, two, three for the Brewers. Okay, so we'll just keep moving along. Caldwell to face Wilson Contreras. The Cubs catcher. 1 3. Well, okay, so we've got our first home run check here. Or, uh, sorry, we had a home run check with, with Silver Sense, right? So, anyway, so we've got a home run check with a question mark. We see that the 20 siders at 10, so Contreras is a right handed batter on a 1 through 18. It falls in that range, so we go right to the home run rating of the batter. And against a left handed pitcher, Contreras is a 7. Once again, that's modified by the ballpark, if any. So there's no modifier for County Stadium. So on one through seven, Contreras has reached the seats. We've got a 17. No, he has not. So let's see what he actually did do. 53. So 5-3 for Contreras. So the star line four. Go to Caldwell star four. That's a fly ball to left. All right. So that's uh, one out. Here's Jorge Soler. All right, 1-4. One, 1-4 four. One, four is an S1 in parentheses. Um, once again, if you see the S1 or the W1 in parentheses, or the W in parentheses, uh, those are checks if he's tired, but he's not tired, so you just treat that as a blank. Whenever you get a blank on the pitcher's card, you go to the batter right away. We've got a 54, 5-4 five, four, against a lefty, and once again, it's a split rating, so you read what's to the left of the... Um, slash because it's a left-handed pitcher. So that's a single and to th third base. Had it been a right-handed pitcher, big ground out. All right, so it's a single. Um, just past the third baseman or an infield hit, whatever way you want to look at it. So Soler is on for the Cubs' uh, third hit of the day. Now, one thing about Soler is he has an N on his attempt rating for stolen base. So he's never going to attempt to steal. Um, and uh, some players will have an H, which means they don't attempt to steal except if there's a hit and run on or something like that. Uh, or a butt that, but basically, uh, so they're just going to, he's just, just a station to station kind of guy. So Caldwell with Addison Russell up. Caldwell looking for another double play. So 45, 45 says, oh, here's a wild pitch check. Okay, so Caldwell's wild pitch rating is 1 through 15. We see there's a 15 on the 20 signer, so he lets one uh, hit the dirt and skip past the catcher. So Soleil is at second. So here's Russell with a chance to drive in a run. 
get the Cubs on the board. Uh, so four, four. All right, so it's a blank. Go right to Solaire's card. Four, one. That's a star line, star one. Star one, we see a G6. Well, had he not on cork that wild pitch, it'd be a double play attempt, but that, uh, but he uh, he, uh, he uh, allowed the runner to go second, so we just have a ground ball to shortstop. Um, now, if you if you don't know what to do with the runners on base, you can always just check the ground out charts. Um, the runner on second here, runners advance on a ball hit to first base, second base, or catcher. Runners advance on balls hit to shortstop or pitcher. If the base running rating of the runner beats a D6, otherwise he holds. Russell layers a two. So, nope, he does not beat a five, so he holds. Um, and um, he out throws over to Cooper for the second out. And then here's Javi Baez, the second baseman. Well, think about this Cubs team. Uh, you can't, well, you might be able to see it here, but I've got the ratings written down. You'll see the defense of the Cubs is really outstanding. You've got Fowler, who's a four range and three error and uh, kind of weak arm, but he still get, gets a lot of balls. And Chris Bryant is a four at third base. Rizzo's a five at first. Contreras is a, he's an average catcher, but he's still got a minus one arm. So that helps you out. Uh, so there's an average kind of left fielder. Uh, but he's got zero for his error range. So he, when he gets to some, he holds on to it. Addison Russell's got an outstanding range at five and a six error rating. So that's really good. Uh, but he does hurt you on the on the pivot um, with the minus one. Baez at second is a five range with the uh, seven error rating. He doesn't have a pivot rating and also it's uh, neither plus or minus. And then Hayward is a five uh, range we've already seen that and so yeah we already know about Hayward if you go and uh, you know you look at the overall team speed of the Cubs with the base runner ratings uh, Fowler's a four is over three Bryant four Rizzo one Contreras so yeah, you know the, the Cubs have a little speed at the top um, a little bit at the bottom here at the back end uh, you go over the Brewers and the Brewers um, they're, they're a decent uh, defensive team uh, not great uh, uh, not, not not poor by any means. They're uh, kind of right in the middle there. They've got a bunch of threes and fours, no fives, no ones and twos. So they're right in the middle there. But you look at their error ratings. Their error their error ratings are really good. Ganders a five, Simmons a two, Ogilvy a four, uh, Brohard four, Thomas a two, Cooper a two, Yount is an eight at shortstop, and, and Motter's kind of uh, he's a thirteen, not not that great. But overall, they've got uh, you know when they get to the ball, they they uh, they make the plays they need to make. And like I said, uh, what really helps them out is the uh, the plus uh, pivot ratings for the double play. And then you look at their team speed and a little on the slow side. You know, uh, I find it surprising that Molitor's a three uh, on the bases. And, you know, that doesn't necessarily uh, mean that he's slow. It, you know, a lot of times it could just uh, also uh, have a lot to do with the uh, game situations and instinct and then and, and maybe you're just gonna um rather than take a chance of of getting Molitor thrown out somewhere you're just gonna hold them up because you know the, you've got those big bats coming up behind them um so anyway uh so you know you got Molitor and, and, and Yawn have a little bit of speed then the middle of the lineup is a little sluggish station to station and then Ganner's got a, uh, a little bit at the end, at the bottom but uh uh, overall, these are uh, two uh, uh, fair, uh, fairly well-matched teams. I would give a pitching edge uh, to the Cubs, obviously, because you know that was a historic uh, kind of pitching uh, staff they had last year. Uh, but anyway, um, let's go to uh, Javier Baez uh, with two outs here in the first and a runner at second. All right, five, six. Five, six, it's a blank. And so in a blank, we go to the batter's card. Three, three tells us it's a G1. So he just hits it right back to Caldwell, flips it to Cooper, and that ends the Cubs' second inning. Nothing on a hit. Go to the bottom of the second. Here's the Brewers, the base Arietta. See Money, Thomas, and Brohard, the middle of the order. Five, five. Five five is going to be at the uh, at results. So it takes us to the ballpark chart. County Stadium one two. A one two is the star two. So we go to Arietta, and that's a ground ball a third. So 
Bryant throws out uh, throws out uh, money. Here's Gorman Thomas. All right, one four. We got a strikeout plus rating. Now a strikeout plus is, uh, like I said, is you add ten, and you can see that the twenty side is a three, so that's automatically going to be a strikeout because uh, the three is less than the ten. And then there's two outs, and here's Brohard. Twenty-two range play at the ballpark. Okay, so we've got a range play, and we go to the ballpark to see where the ball is hit. Four one fly ball to left. So we have a three on the red die. Check the range of our left fielder, Soler. He is a three, so Soler gets over there in time to put it away. So that's the second inning. So far, no score in this game. Uh, brings up Jason Hayward, number nine man for the Cubs. Face my call, yo. And so you can see that uh, you know once you get in the in, well, once you get the mechanics down, you kind of get into a rhythm, and uh, the game can play uh, rather quickly. Uh, two six, so two six. Um, this is a split result. He's a left-handed batter, so we check it's a star result. So we find out who he, who he hits it to. It's a G you know, one gives us a ground ball, a shortstop. So Hayward hits it to Yount for the first out, and then we're back to the top of the lineup. Dexter Fowler. Fowler flew out to center to open the game. 6-6. Six, six. Ah, RP. That's another range play. But this time we go to the batter's card. 6-2. Six, 6-2. Two. Six, two. Star 2. So star 2 is a ground ball to second base. Ground ball to second. We've got a 3. We know Ganner is a 4. So that is a ground out. Two outs. And then Ben Zobrist is up. Zobrist hit a double. Back in the first. 3-5. All right. Once again, we've got another home run check for Zobrist. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's seeing the ball real well off of Caldwell. Now this one doesn't have the question mark, so we skip the question mark line here and we go directly to the batter's home run rating. And since he's a left-handed pitcher, he needs a seven or less. 